Good morning. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. One more time. I was glad when they said to me, let us come into the house of the Lord. I said again, good morning. I'm glad to see if my face this morning to be part of devotion. We're going to serve God this morning. We're going to worship God. We're going to lift up his name in praise. It's good to say again, it's good to be here. We could have been in a lot of other places, but God saw fit to, to bring us to the house of the Lord. I'm so glad to be here this morning. On Father's Day. Amen. And my father said, Father, have a to all the fathers that are here this morning. I'm uh, one that I'm at home. Amen. Down.
so that we can lead better than we can. Again, Father, we just want to tell you thank you. These and all of the blessings we ask your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Sunday we have now youth round up everything will be outside we have water slides food fun and good old fellowship for our fifth Sunday also amen. Uh, fifth Sunday of course casual attire amen uh, all outside service amen uh, and again as we another part I'm going to go ahead and announce it our men's fashion show get ready to walk today let's have some fun amen. We ask for $10 donation, you have $10, pay five. If you just want to walk, you can walk. It's okay. You just you ain't caught up on it. We are not caught up like that. Amen. Amen. Well, we're looking for participation in a few minutes. You see this part? We're going to go out and we're going to march in and we're going to strut. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. Those are our announcements. Amen. Let's go to our civil court. Amen. Uh, 
right, men, come on up, men. Come on up, men. Come on, come on up, men. Young men, old men. If, if, if you a man, if, if, you got, if you got any man DNA, if you got any man DNA, if, if, if on your birth certificate it said man, and, and you accept that as who you are, if you accept the fact that you are a man, you know, I don't want to force you, but if you, if you proud and excited about being a man, man up, come on up, come on up to the choir stand. Watch out, watch out, watch out there, that guy. Watch out there, that guy. We're going to take that for your model walk, too. We're going to take that for that, too.
While we get ready, can I get everyone to just stand for one second? I guess I'm gonna ask a favor. Everyone, please stand while we're waiting and getting ready. Can we just wish Brother Alexander hey! a happy birthday? Next we have 
down. touch the table, amen. That's a blessing to be able to walk, amen. Amen. Just give our attention to our usher, amen. Yes. Just touch the table and tell the Lord thank you. Next Sunday he'll bless you, he'll bless you this afternoon. Ain't no secret what God can do, Amen. Bible say we have not because we ask not. Let's give our beautiful women of New Salem a hand. Hey, Amen. They're looking stunning today. Big ones, little ones, and all. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Church of God, say amen. I know your bulletins call for all to prayer. The Lord said, Sabbath was made for man, and man was not made for the Sabbath. So he gives us the authority and permission to make changes as we see fit. This is Father's Day. This is Father's Day. And we live in a society that diminishes fathers. It diminishes fathers. And each time we allow a father to be diminished, we diminish ourselves. Amen, somebody. Amen. We diminish ourselves. And whether you like it or not, as fathers go, so does society. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm, I'm in the Bible now. I'm in the Bible now. Uh, Trouble didn't start until fathers slipped up. Are you all, you all, you all with me? You all with me? And God has spent the entire history, biblical history of humanity, calling fathers back to their positions. Amen. See, when fathers take their position, assume their position, women will get out of the way automatically. Come on, you know, just assume your position. Amen. Why? Because it's ordained by God. And it does not matter what man did. 
God didn't change his order. Hello, somebody. God didn't put Eve in charge because Adam sinned. And so instead of altar prayer, I want to take this moment to allow everybody who want to come say something about their father. To just come and say something about father. Even if you didn't know your father, say, Lord, I didn't know him, but I'm glad I'm here. God bless your heart. Lord, over there.
how you say right now, I'm just a blind man walking the earth. But as long, as long as I can see that sight from God, I'm going to live right. Right. child, what it meant to love a child. 
But as I got to know God and as I began to separate myself and find myself uh, 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 seeking after God, God began to show me a blueprint of what a father really is. And so those of y'all who don't know your father, the father wasn't around, that doesn't change the fact that you're still supposed to honor them. If they didn't treat you right, that doesn't change the fact that you dishonored them. Honor them. And God will be pleased with you in your days of belonging right. on earth. Senior. He is a man of God. He was the first man that actually taught me about God. So that's where my teaching first came from, was my father. Of course, my mom also. But on several Sundays, we would wake up early in the morning, going to church every Sunday morning. He was the way he drove the church bus. We would pick everybody up. So that means we would be up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes just getting ready. Me. <laughs> Me. So I, so we would be on time. Um, so 
Sunday school, Bible study, BTU, revivals, Congress. We stayed at church all day long, all day, all night, every Sunday. So I just thank God for him. I thank God for introducing, for him to be able to introduce me to God. Um, and my continued journey with God, because y'all, we need him. We need the Lord. We can't make this journey without the Lord. I would like to wish my husband a happy Father's Day. He's a great father. The inspiration, him and my dad, they both like, you know, yeah. I heard my, little, my, my, my daughter, stepdaughter, say that she want to marry a man like her father. My mama tell me all the time, you marry your dad. That man just like your dad. <laughs> So, do that, baby. It, it, it'll be worth it, because he's a good man. He's a good man. I would like to wish all the men in the house a happy Father's Day. My pastor and all the deacons, happy Father's Day.
one for Hatton, one was here this morning, and the rest of them I know they're in the Lord's house, because that's the way he called us. When he left this world, uh, Pastor calculated he had passed 118 years and living 78 years. Living 78 years, he passed the 35 years in one place, 25 another. 33, 37, another. But he taught me, and when I say he taught me how to live, when I was 10, we came in twos and threes. Two girls, three boys, three girls, and half them the last. He, at 10, if I was 10, Slate would have had to been about eight or nine. He looked at us and said, girls, these men, leaving these women with all these children, I was 10 years old, had no idea, and at that point, we were probably sitting at the hospital waiting for mama to bring another baby home, because I told him, I said, daddy, uh, why don't you tell mama to stop going to that hospital and bring the baby home? Baby. Oh, wasn't well, nobody going to take his baby for me. I know he said it. But he says, girls, I want y'all to get your education. I made 10 and probably eight in my hand. Says, these men are leaving these women with all these children. I'm saying to myself, I know you want to leave. <laughs> but I didn't say that. I wouldn't think no, no baby was getting on my nerves. I, I, I love every last one of them. But daddy says, get your education and graduate from high school. yourself ways if you get a man that is not up to the where he's supposed to be and he walks off and leaves. You can take care of yourself. Daddy, I did it. I didn't get now, but <laughs> I'm still, when I got one, I didn't have to depend on the cook. He had taught me how to live, and I still do, and I think. He didn't have I hold a master's degree, but he learned how to study the Word of God, and he taught us how to read and to love people, and that's what I do on a daily basis. Give all that I've got to the Christ that has brought me, because he taught me. God bless your heart. The hour rolls in place, so we must proceed on. I just want to say one thing. Rose, I'm glad Dad didn't listen to you and kept sending Mama to the hospital. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad you didn't take that advice. God bless your heart. It's preaching time. And we have a young man here that's capable and qualified to introduce himself as he breaks up to us the bread of life. Let us elevate our hands and say, Minister Little. We want you to preach. Minister Little, Little, we need a word. Need a word. Let, the Let the Lord use you until they use you up. Nothing by ourselves. 
I want to say uh, I, I, I've enjoyed everyone's talk. It's been very good. You all have really preached the message. Um, but I want to say, even if you did not have a father in your life, God is your father. Yeah. And because no man is perfect, no father is perfect. So even with a father, we all still need God to fill in the gaps. So let's put our hands together one more time for God, the perfect father. today a little bit of teaching and a little bit of preaching. I'm putting myself on a timer right now. I always like to keep up with it, know where I am. Um, I don't know if it's you all's custom to stand or not, but if you'll join me over in the book of Genesis. We're going to read a few verses, but I'm only going to have you stand for this one. Uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 1, you should be able to find that. Uh, if you can't, maybe it's your first time in church, but well. <laughs> Genesis, chapter 1, verse 28, when you have it, say amen. Verse, Genesis, chapter 1, 28, reads like this. It says, and God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply, replenish the earth, and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and every living thing that moves upon the earth. The word of God for the people of God. Bless you. Before I can give my manners and protocol, I'll give an honor to you, Pastor, Pastor Smith, who has become a mentor to me. I always enjoy pulling on his wisdom. He's a stern man. A loving man, a kind man, that knows how to make great decisions. And when I came to the lot, Pastor, I can tell you he was doing a wonderful job because I didn't have nowhere to park. <laughs> so that's always a wonderful it. problem to have. Amen. <laughs> Give an honor to First Lady. God bless you. Amen. Give many greetings from Mount Vernon Baptist Church. Amen. Pastor Watkins is my pastor. Yes, I had the honors. Spending two years under Dr. James L. Nettles, great yes, man, if you know him. Great uh, in accordance with the Holy Spirit and in alignment with your theme, I want to minister from the topic, One Head, Many Hats. All right. One Head, Many Hats. Like Book of Genesis. When we think about God being a multifaceted God, we know him as God the Father, God the Son. And God the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. yeah. God the Father. God the Son they call him Jesus. And yeah. God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. One God. But many hats. Many functions. And yet we see that God. The beautiful thing about what we call the Trinity. That the Trinity is. Individually. Functional. But yet at the same time. Always collaboratively. In unison. Each functionality. God the Father. God the Spirit, God the Son, is an individual personality, but yet they move in harmony and unison. Mm -hmm. The same way we would like for a church to operate, that pastors and deacons and choir members and trustees would be individual, right? Mm -hmm. But yet move in harmony. The same thing, the same way relationships would work. That a man and a woman are individuals, but yet they should come together with a collaborative, collective purpose, right? And so, God models this perfect union for us of being separate but yet equal and together. Yeah. And, and so when we minister from the topic one hand but many hats, we realize that whether you're a man or a woman, that we all are an individual head, but yet we have a head in heaven. Amen. Yes, sir. A heavenly yeah. Father. Yeah. All right. Now, now this is Father's Day, and so we want to honor the fathers today. And it's Juneteenth weekend. Right. Amen. So we celebrate black independence on this weekend. Amen. But but the beautiful thing I love about the word is that the word is universal. So as we study the word in Adam, the first Adam, the things of Adam apply to the ladies as well. Mm -hmm. So ladies, you all are not left out. Right. So the things that I'll be teaching today will hit men first, but they definitely can be applicable to a woman as well, especially if you're a single woman. An independent woman. Okay. Is there an independent woman in the room? Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, all right, all right. 
Good, good, good. So, so because a woman has to do all the things that a man has to do until she's blessed to come under the comfort and security of a man. And, and like so, like, like as an individual, you are part of your mother, part of your father. When we study the word of God and we look at Adam and we look at Eve, the things that are in Adam is in every man and every woman, and the things that are in, are in Eve is inside of every man and every woman. Yes, sir. If this was not true, then men would not be able to be tempted by the devil because technically only Eve was tempted. Right? That's right. So, so Eve and Adam are the first man and the first woman. And so inside of us is a little Adam and a little Eve, right? Yeah. right. So we get into the word of God and we see that I love John. John chapter 1 very eloquently uh, quoted. You heard it before. He says that in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. I'll say that again for you. In the beginning of time, in the beginning of the world, was the word. And the word was God. And the word was God. And the same was in the beginning with God. And these things were made by him. And the Bible says that without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness. And the darkness did not comprehend the light. Yeah, That's a beautiful thing. So that means that if you're here today and you thought it enough to come to church, it's because God called you. You are not a child of darkness. Yeah. Much of what we do in the world and in the community in terms of evangelizing is so that we can find our brothers and sisters of the light. All right, all right. We're not worried about going after the children of the lost because some people are just lost. Yeah. They will never perceive God, have no interest in God. They don't even want to talk with it. They are committed, committed to the past. Of darkness. All right. But there are those of us who are called to the church, yeah. called to God. Uh, we're thinking about it. We have questions. We're trying to figure things out. This is the stirring and the calling of God on our lives. And so when we look at Genesis and we get back to that, we get the original decree that God gave to man. It is five things. I like to call them five hats for this okay. morning. Is that good? Yeah. All right. All right. He gives Adam five hats. The first one, he tells them, I want you to be fruitful. Say fruitful. Fruitful. I want you to be productive. I want you to be fertile. I want you to be, think about a fruit. A fruit is sweet. A fruit is nourishing. Uh, last week, we did BBS, Vacation Bible Study, and I had the privilege of teaching two of the fruits, goodness and self-control. And, and I won't go on a deep tangent, but in studying my fruits, I found out something beautiful, y'all. That every fruit starts off as a flower. That's right. And plants actually make love. Yeah. Plants don't produce any of themselves. Every plant releases pollen. Right. And the pollen is what makes the plant grow. But guess what? A plant can't produce off its own pollen. Right. Just like I can't make it That's out of right. my own love. That's right. Yeah. So what I give is what I need. So God makes us to habitate in community. All right. And then God uses the, the bee, the wasp, right. the butterfly, to spread the love of the pollen. Yeah. So what you're saying, Reverend, what I'm saying is sometimes the things that irritate you the most are the things that help you grow. Yes, sir. So, so he tells them, I need you to be fruitful. This means that you have to be loving. You have to have a conviction, a conviction, a reason why you do a thing. I remember being at a conference and there was this young minister and he asked the older pastor a question. He said, Pastor, all my life I wanted to pastor and now I've been doing it three years and I don't enjoy it anymore. I, I, I find myself almost depressed and everything. And the older man looked at the young man and said, that's because you lost your conviction. He said, you let the people in your heart when you should have kept them in your head. He said, that don't make sense, Pastor. He said, I'm supposed to love God's people. He said, no, you're supposed to love God. And you're supposed to minister to his people from your mind because you need strategy. You let them in your heart, and now when they mess up in church, you're disappointed personally. Because they're in your heart. Long story short, you lost your convictions. 
Convictions are things that you lean into. They are your absolutes. I absolutely believe this. I absolutely do not believe this. I absolutely believe that God loves me. I absolutely believe that God is real. Now, why is that important? Because life will put you in situations and will shake your conviction if you think that God is supposed to do what you want God to do. Think about that. Because if that's the case, then God becomes an unlimited American Express card. God becomes a perfect fountain of health. And we would all love perfect health and an unlimited bank account, but who does that really help? In a dying world, in a struggling world, if all you have to do is pray to God and get all that you want and be whatever you want, wow. it does not even match up with the reality of this world. That's right. This world where we have been given freedom. When God is talking to Adam and he's telling him to do these things, this is Adam's space. How many parents in the house? You see your hands. All right, just like if you give your children a room. Now, I own the house, but this is your room that I'm going to teach you responsibility for. So I'm going to give you a little bit of privacy, a little bit of space in your room so that you learn to manage it. So if your room is dirty, you live in a dirty room. If your room is nasty or stanky, if you don't ever shower and you just go out in the street and get right in bed, now you got bed bugs in your room, you know, and you itch. Why? Because you hadn't managed your room. Sometimes we don't manage our life. And we think because we didn't manage our life, God ain't good. No, God is great. You're not managing your life. So he tells them, be fruitful. The next hat he gives them, I want you to multiply. Now, when you're looking at these things, don't look at them as uh, abilities. Because if you look at, them, look at them as abilities, you'll think that they are uh, optional. It's not. I'm going somewhere. It's your nature. So what I mean is, you will be fruitful, you will multiply. Whether you multiply the right stuff, or you multiply yes, the wrong stuff. All right. There will be multiplicity. And this goes beyond children. Even if you don't have children, you will multiply your attitude. You will multiply your energy. Your mindset will multiply in the quality of life that you live. Am I making sense? Go ahead. So a man has to be intentional with the thoughts, and a man must be intentional with his desires. Because where a man is and where a man focuses, that's where a man will multiply. Yeah. Same thing for my ladies. What you do is what you'll multiply. So if you're not working, you're not ambitious, all you do is eat junk food and watch TV, and then you'll be depressed. Well, what are you doing with these abilities that the Lord has given you? Wow. So as we look at this, and we realize that God is the head over us, Jesus, one head, we have to do extra work to make sure that the head on our shoulders aligns with the head that's in heaven. Yeah. We have to allow the king of heaven to become king of our heart. And when you allow the king of heaven to become king of your heart, now the Holy Spirit can end the well. All right. Now we, almost in a sense, become like a part of the Trinity. In fact, because now we have access to the Holy Spirit, God in us, and as God moves through the Trinity, God can then navigate through us. All right. Second thing he tells them, I want you to replenish. Replenish. The third hat. Probably one of the most important hats. To replenish means to give back to. Okay. Don't just take from the world. Give back, back to the world. Yeah. Yeah. I love hearing the sister talk about how she could make this. Give back to her dad. So many times we take and we don't put nothing back. And it denigrates and lowers the quality of the life that we see. Yeah. Because God put a system in place in this earth that says that as you give, you will receive. Yeah. And so it's the same thing in our lives through our gratitude. You have to give back what you have given, what you have received. Otherwise, it's nothing for you to have. Amen. Let's go back to the room. Amen. If you Go home, take off dirty clothes, and you don't ever put them in the washing machine, then you're going to run out of stuff to wear, right? 
right? You're going to be like, well, all my clothes dirty. Yeah. Right? You never gave back to the dryer and the wash machine. Yeah. Same thing right. with your dishes. Yeah. You know, you can have all the food you want. But if you stop washing dishes, you're going to be eating on the table. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because right. life requires that you give back. And so sometimes, men, the quality of our relationships, we feel like we're working hard, but we don't enjoy our life at home because you're only working, but you're not giving back your presence in the house. Wow. Yes, it's good to provide, but you must also provide attention. Wow. One of the most silly things I heard in a church one time, pastor was talking about marriage. I'm going to make this real PG-13. But he was like, sisters and husbands, uh, tap you on the shoulder in the middle of the night. You need to wake up even if you're sleeping. Take a shower. And so, think about that. The relationship get out of balance. Because a man want that, but a lot of times a woman want to talk about her day. Want to talk about work. Man, I ain't got time to listen. No, y'all bodies belong to each other. You want her attention at night? She wants your attention after doing the game. You know? So, so it has to be an exchange of listening. There doesn't have to be an exchange of giving back. It's not enough just to do one thing. Life requires that you wear the many hats. So, we have to give back, even in our relationship with God. God blesses us, and we can't repay God. We can't give back to God for all of the Love and the mercy and the grace and the times when he held back his hand and loved us with his heart. But we can give him praise, right? Yeah. We can magnify the Lord. And as we magnify the Lord, he becomes great in our life and great in our expectation. Right. Some of us don't have enough faith to accomplish anything because we're not worshipers. Yeah. Wow. That's right. And so even though God is real, he's small in your life. Yeah. Yeah. And he's small in your perspective. Yeah. Because you don't really trust God, you trust your job. Yeah. You don't really trust God, you trust your relationship. Yeah. You don't trust God, you trust your health. Yeah. And so then when your money run out and your health run out yeah. and people, your friends run out, now you think God ran out. God didn't run out. Your ability to use God ran out. I don't care what car you drove here this morning. If you don't give your car gas, you can't go nowhere. We can move to the next one. The next head, subdue. Subdue. Say, take control. Take control. Bring your life under subjection. The fourth commandment brings things under subjection, meaning by definition to overcome or to bring control. It is the most very important. It's a trait, and it's not a feature. You have to subdue. If you do not subdue the right thing, you'll subdue the wrong thing. You, if you don't take control of the flesh, you will then take control of sin. So either way it goes, God made you to control stuff. And so really, when you're working with the devil and you let the devil trick you, all you're doing is being manipulated with the power and ability that the Lord gives you. Your, your vitality, your life, your energy is a gift from God. Where you invest it is what it will produce. So therefore, you have to subdue your life. You have to cultivate yeah. your relationships. You have to cultivate your purpose. You have to cultivate your mind. And these things are all things that the Holy Spirit will strive with you for. The minute you start talking to God, God say, all right now, you need to get in church more. All right, you need to study. All right, you need to go walking. When last time you went walking? All right, now you've eaten too many chicken wings. It's the third time you've eaten these. When the last time you ate some bread? And am I the only one? The Holy Spirit talking to me like that. Am I the only one? I done had time. The Holy Spirit told me, be quiet. That's right. And I'm talking to the Holy Spirit, I said, shut up. Why are talking so much? I'm like, you're right, Lord. I don't need to be an embarrassment to just be in the Lord, you know. So, so we have to subdue. If we don't subdue, life gets out of control. Because 
what we see with Adam is that this world is a partnership. Now, we get to heaven, God got heaven. Okay. God got heaven. All right. But he sent us here to be ambassadors in the earth. Amen. So if the earth is not right, that means the children of God are not working it right. That's All right. So going back to my parent thing, it's just like a parent has to walk by that room and say, you still playing? Uh-uh. Cut the TV off. Fold these clothes. Go dust. Go vacuum. Change them sheets. Why? Because your life is out of order. You still playing in the street? You still chasing women, brother? You still drinking a whole, whole lot? Cut all that off. Cut all the chasing. Go in there and build some real relationships. Build some real friendships. Get a trade. Put your room in order. Lastly, he tells them, take dominion. Take dominion. It literally means that God is standing behind you saying, go do what your daddy taught you. Go do what I taught you to do. Right, you can do it. Go on up there. Do it. Cut the grass. You, you how to cut grass. I showed you. No, you act like I ain't taught you how to cut grass. You act like I ain't taught you how to fold clothes. Go on, take control. Put the devil out of your life. Stop sitting around depressed and feeling sorry for you. Take dominion over yourself. If you don't like what you see, you don't like how you feel, then you get on your knees and you get with the Holy Spirit and you put some things in order. You don't live life how life is. You make life what you feel like it should be. Take dominion. So our heads make our decisions. Our heads are our decisions. Because here's the thing, you can change your hat. But you can't change your head. You can change your hat. But you can't change your head. What's in here is in here. Whether it be ambition or trauma or bad self-image, depression, you can change your hat. You can put your makeup on. You can get a good weave, a Brazilian weave, all that fast stuff. You can get the best brother. We can get a fade. We can get a toupee. But if the mind ain't right, the mind ain't right. And so sometimes we look good on the inside, but my God, we don't feel good on the inside. Look good on the outside. Messed up on the inside. And so it takes God to Work on us to change the inside, to develop it. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, I want to read it to you. 2 Corinthians chapter 10 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They're not carnal, they're not fleshly. But they are mighty through God. Watch this. Here, here's your ability right here. To the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And bringing into captivity every thought into the obedience of Christ. God says, I've given you power to shape how you think, how you feel, and what you see. Mm. You me. cast down the imaginations in your mind. You cast down the thoughts. I'll put the devil out, but I can't put the thoughts out of your head. Wow. The Holy Spirit will rebuke every demon, but the Holy Spirit cannot rebuke your bad imagination. We have to believe that we have the ability. So, so something, something happens. I want you to go to 1 Samuel with me. Oh, I'm almost done. Well, we give you a little theory. I think I'm at about 23 minutes. Time to go by fast. Um, 1 Samuel 1 Samuel chapter 1. No, 1 Samuel chapter 30. I want to show you something with David. Something happens. I want to show you all of these things in practice, in example. I'll give you a theory. The five hats. Multiply. Be fruitful. Replenish. Subdue. Take dominion. Now let's look at Samuel and see what that looks like. You have 1 Samuel Chapter 30. Now I'm not going to read all that. I'm going to read half of it. And then I'm going to paraphrase of that. Because I don't know why. But it, people can stand in the DMV line for hours. But in church, if you read over 12 verses, 
It feels yeah. like 45 minutes. <laughs> and it feels like it to me when I have to read it, y'all. <laughs> All right. Let's go. First Samuel chapter 31 says that it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag was smitten and burned with fire. And they had taken the women captive that, that they that were therein, and they slew not any of them, neither great nor small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city, and behold, it was burned with fire, and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. I want y'all to picture that. Then David's two wives were taken captive, Ahanan and Jersey, Jersey Lights, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelite. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stone in him, because the soul of the people was grieved. You ever did something bad when you was upset? Every man was grieved for his sons and for his daughters, but watch this, David encouraged himself in the Lord. And David said to Abathar the priest, Amalek's son, bring me to hither the ephod. And he brings him the ephod. And, and he asked the Lord, I'm paraphrasing now, he asked him, God, shall I pursue? Shall I go after these men? And God says, yes, take the minion, pursue, and recover all. So David gets ready to pursue, and he leaves with 400 men. If you follow along with me, I'm around verse 11. As they go on their way, they find a wounded man, an Egyptian. And the Egyptian, they don't know it. He's just wounded. He's near death. They take him. They take care of him. They feed him. Come to find out, he was a part of that Amalekite camp. And then he had got sick, and they left him so that they could travel faster. So now that they find out he's with the Amalekites, they say, hey, where your people at? We looking for him. We trying to spin the block. And so he says, I'll tell you where they at. Please don't hurt me. Don't kill me. And so they say, all right, we ain't going to kill you. Show us where they at. And so they go down there and they find them. And the Bible said that David fought them all night long. All day they fought. And they killed all of them. And they got back all of their families. They recovered it. Verse 1, verse 9, the first point I want to lift out out of that. And then when they get there and they wept, they wept till they could not cry anymore because the homes were destroyed, the children were gone. Just because I feel empty does not mean that I am dead. Just because I feel empty, I am still alive. I may feel dead on the inside, but as long as my That's hope for me. So, men, there will be times when you won't have the money. There will be times when you won't have the support. That's when a man must be a worshiper. A man must be able to go before the Lord and dance and sing and cry. I feel the glory right now. Until he knows that God is real in his life. Yeah. And God will say, I can't let you die here because I told you to be fruitful. Yeah. How can you be fruitful when they got your family? How can you be fruitful if the devil got your money? So what God is saying, I ain't going to let you be left like that, Doc. You go out there and you pursue. I'm going to meet you on the road. Yeah. So he tells them, Go on. That's a word, That's a word. Though they've taken my family and I don't know where they at, though I've lost everything that I've invested in, I am still alive. Second thing, he tells them, we see with David, that before David goes into war, he worships and he goes before the Lord. Sometimes, men, we get in crisis mode. We get in crisis mode and we just do whatever. And then God didn't tell you to take that job. You was lonely. God didn't tell you to take that relationship. 
You needed friends. God didn't say them was your friends. You was lonely. You was hungry. Yeah. And you yeah. made the move, but you did not consult with the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Ladies, I know y'all some of y'all self here, but I'm going to bring it to you too. Sometimes you get tired of struggling with the kids all along. And so then you start making decisions, not looking at the personality, looking at the pockets, not looking at the personality, looking at the height, all these things. And then you end up in a pickle, in a bad situation. But guess what? You have to worship before you go to war. Yes, you go for war. Yes, you meant to work. But you want to work where the Lord put you. You want to war where the Lord work. You don't want to fight the battles that the Lord didn't tell you to fight. Some of us spend so much time wrestling with the wrong stuff. Wrestling with the wrong people. And you're not winning the fight because it's not the fight that you were called to fight. Thank you, Lord. Second thing, the Bible tells us around verse, around verse uh, 9, we see that he leaves with 600 men, but we get to the brook, and 200 of them cannot continue. 200 of them are just already exhausted. They want to. They just got in off the road. They're overcome with grief. They cannot fight. Brothers and sisters, this is not for us to look down on these men. It is for us to see that God will be the greater David in our lives. Yeah. There will be times where you cannot fight. That's why you need your church. That's why yeah. you need your pastor. Yeah. That's why you need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Because sometimes when your strength is run out, God will still go over the brook for you. Yeah. Tell somebody, I don't have to lose. I don't have to lose. God's going to cross over for me. Yeah. Yeah. So David keeps on riding. Yeah. Next thing, next point, round 11, we talked about replenishing. We see that even though these men are in a crisis mode, even though they don't know where their families are, they see a man on the side of the road, sick, and they stop and they restore this man. Yeah. As a believer, your life cannot be all about you. Even though yeah, you're facing yeah, hell, yeah. you are God's representative. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And as God's representative, if we don't do it, it don't get yeah. done. Yeah. 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 So when you ride and you see abandoned houses and drug houses and gang houses, and you ride on Lamar and you see people walking, it's because we didn't do it. That's right. Amen. Wow. This is our room. Right. Yeah. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Yeah. Who are the hands of God? Yeah. God don't have hands. God don't have legs. We're the legs of God. We're the hands of God. So the world is what we made it. We have to take dominion. So when they replenish this man, there's a connection. As they replenish this man, this man gives them the seed or the info to where they need to be next. What are you saying, right. preacher? Sometimes we work so hard and we mean well, but we still selfish. Come on, preacher. Wow. That's right. That's right. And in serving, you will get your direction. A lot of time in the professional world, when you're trying to find where you want to work, they'll see you the intern. <laughs> They don't pay you to intern most of the time. Yeah. Because interning ain't really for them. Interning is for you. To see if you like it. See if you good at it. Some of us never found our purpose because we don't do nothing. I don't know. I just said I don't know what I want to do in life. I don't know why. Everybody got their careers. Everybody got their husband. You don't do nothing. You don't go nowhere. You just comfortable in the house. Comfortable watching TV. Comfortable in the house. So, of course. I don't hear you, Lord. Okay. Okay. The Lord says some of y'all comfortable in church, too. Comfortable in the house. I'm glad you come to church. But where do you apply what you learn? I'm glad you come to church. Yes, sir. But really, you go to church so that you can go to war. That's right. Lord Jesus. You come, come to worship. It's right there. He worships so that he can go to war. That's right. When you come to church, Sunday morning is a picture of the work that we've done Monday through Friday. All right. All right. We can see how well we love people. 
by how many people come to the church. Wow. You see how many people we evangelize by how many people came to the church. Wow. Pastor can see how many people you've been telling about Jesus wow. by how many people followed you to the church. <laughs> but if we're not careful, we'll live life with this me only type thing. Oh. And not understanding that God the Father don't take care of you. He just wants you to clean your room. I'm going to pay the rent. I'm going to do the lights. I'm going to buy the groceries. Don't the scriptures say take no thought? But I need you to clean your room. I need you to clean your attitude. I need you to clean your focus. I need you to clean your expectations. I need you to clean your memory and clean your heart. I'll, I'll put money in your pocket. I'll put health in your body. But I need you to do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. So they go on. I'm almost done. Oh, I got to wrap up. I got to quit. And so, so they, they get to the point where they get here. They're here now. And they go to war. They go to war. God will not bring you to a fight that he was not ready to finish. God will not tell you to go fight if you was not going to recover. But the first step again is worshiping. If you don't worship the Lord, you can't hear the Lord. The Bible says that God inhabits the praises of his people. So your worship and your praise is the phone call that gets the conversation started. So if you feel like God don't talk to you, if you feel like God not speaking to you, it's because you never initiated the conversation. God says, if you want something from me, make well of me. Right now where you at, just tell God thank you. Just tell him thank you, God. Thank you for making a way in my life. Thank you for giving me a second chance, God. Thank you for letting us come to church this morning, God. Thank you for blessing us together. God says when you do that, when you're fruitful, I'll bless you to defeat the enemy. God says I won't let the enemy snatch your seed. And I told you to be fruitful and have kids. I won't let the enemy take your family. I want you to recover all, brothers. I want you to recover all, sisters. Anything that you feel like is missing in your life, it's not because you're crazy. It's not because you're dreaming too high. It's because it's missing. <sighs> Y'all stand. Let's pray. I'm done. I'm done enough. Let's pray. When we think about the cross, and Jesus Christ emptied out his blood when he died on Calvary's cross that blood gave us permission to be all that he's been that we want to be Father God we thank you for the word of God we thank you for these men who sacrificed God Lord this is our prayer first that we please you God God we want to say thank you for what you brought us unto them God and when we look back, Lord, we have a testimony. Now, God, I lift up every dream, every desire, every prayer request in the room. God, I lift it up, God, knowing that you are able. And Father God, we acknowledge you as the head of our life, God. Lord, talk to our minds, God. Take residence in our heart, and you get the glory. In your son Jesus' name, amen and amen. Over. Now, if they want to design a come about another Christian candidate for baptism or Christian experience, you may come now while the blood will warm in your veins. Yesterday is gone, tomorrow is not promised. Today is the gift you have now. There will be one that desire. Come now, God. <laughs> Hand out first. There'll be others. Now is the time. Come while you have time.
what better Father's Day gift would you give? Then to dedicate your life to the one true Father of all creation. Step that we accept Brother Hollis on Christian experience after receiving the right hand of fellowship and coming to receive all the rights of the old gentleman the church. I read the question. All in favor, aye. aye. All opposed. Aye. 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 Brother Hollis and listen, you go sit stand right there by Brother Ambrose. They're okay. they going to take you under their wing and they're going to talk to you about a few things. Uh, we just thank God for this message and this message. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Reverend Little is a teacher. Amen. He's a teacher. Amen. Let me help you again in case you are not clear on this. Preaching. Preaching is a milky diet designed to bring men to Christ. Teaching is a meaty diet designed to grow people in Christ. Amen. We've got too many Christians trying to live on preaching Amen. and running away from teaching. Amen. That's why we're not getting any better. That's why I don't understand these hats. He's talking about God bless you. Right. We got anything else on that agenda today? All right, come on now. When will we still feed y'all this month? Y'all will be fat by you month. We feed you every day. Uh, Announcements, Brother Ambrose and Dean Rose, you got nothing? All right. I don't, I don't know if y'all plan on traveling this far, but um, I've been asked to do a musician's um, type of uh, workshop thing in Ashland, Mississippi, and the turnout has been magnificent. 
magnificent. I think we had over 20 something people that were there uh, last Tuesday. It'd be every Tuesday um, during the summer, except for the 4th of July week, I'll be gone. But outside of that, every Tuesday we'll be over there working with folks on guitar and keyboard, uh, drums, percussions, uh, beginners class. Amen. I would just like to uh, announce uh, again our raffle, which will be held on the 30th of this month. And uh, the first prize will be a 50-inch flash screen. It has five-year warranty, Netflix, Apple TV, YouTube, and Disney. And this is our second prize right here, this huge candy basket. So uh, if anyone would like to take a chance on winning this basket, I and supporting our men's ministry, our ministry as a whole here at New Salem Fraser. We can say men and women, but we're all one. Amen. Amen. But in recognition of our men's month, this is what we're doing. We're raffling off this 50 inch flash screen TV. So if you would like to take a chance on the rest of these tickets right here, sir, you can get all of them if you want to. <laughs> But if anybody want to take a chance on winning this flat screen TV or this huge cancer vest, just uh, see me for a ticket. <laughs> Amen? Amen. And I also want to thank my children, my twins right here for such a wonderful Father Day. Yeah, yeah. Thank y'all. I would like to also say that uh, we said that we was uh, we promised that we was feeding everyone this month, but uh, today being Father's Day, we was gonna honor the fathers by whatever they was gonna do after the church after the church service. So we cancel the food and we'll make it up to y'all. Amen. We will make it up to y'all. Okay? Amen. Thank y'all. We'll make it up to y'all the best way we know how. Okay. Thank y'all. No food today. God bless you all. Well, well. 
God bless your heart. This, we we ready to go. Listen, we we've been having an awesome men month. It's a lot more men. We don't have a lot of men, but I want to see. Happy to see my brother. He'll wave to him. Amen. He's actually on the on road. We say to him, God bless your heart. Uh, we thank God, brother Cooper. Brother Cooper supports us. We know his health. Um, and, 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 and Sister Cooper standing the gap for her husband. I like that. Amen. She's standing the gap for him. Uh, they called Justin to work this month, and so it looked like we, we were rolling until we got started, and they had, he had to work, and TJ's in the hospital, and Brother Love has been here, uh, but you know, Brother Love has obligations, we thank him. Uh, Brother Beard supporting us financially, you don't see him physically here, but he's so much financially, so listen, uh, we got it going on, don't sell us short, amen, God bless your heart, we thank God for the working men we do have, God bless your heart, uh, happy Father Lady, everybody. Uh, somehow, some way, tell your father thank you, even if you just talk, talk to the Holy Spirit. God bless your heart. Reverend Little's gonna come back and get the benediction. We're going home. Amen. If everyone will stand, thank you so much for your attentiveness and your time. Give him a hand clap. <laughs> father God, give us, we thank you, first of all, God, for an awesome worship service, God. For a word, God, and just overall fellowship. Now, God, give us traveling mercies as we go back to our many homes and destinations. Now, to you who are able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of your glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, I say to be both now glory and majesty, the me and the power, forever and ever. Amen and amen. God bless you, God. God bless you, God.